Today we're going to cover the reporting documents and requirements for the lead official. As you may know, the lead official is the individual that require, that basically ensures the regulatory and sanctioning integrity of the event. They make sure everything goes smooth and that everything is reported properly. Uh, if you go to our website, fightleague.org, click register, you'll get to the registration page. You have a shortcut to get to the same page by just clicking in kidsmma.org. We're going to go to officials licensing and bypass the training modules and cascades right here. And it's going to say materials required by the lead official. Everything you need, everything you possibly would need to run an event is right here with these documents. We are going to focus right now on the bout card, which is your control center uh, for the event. Makes everything easier, accurate, and it and helps us facilitate proper reporting. So I'm going to click this. We have one that's partially made already by Melissa Samford. I'm going to click on that. Now John Romero created this form for us. Not only does it help record, get published on the website, this once completed will also be able to populate our individual results as we've been keeping since 2011 for every single fighter that has been in the USFL. So it's important that this form is done properly quality control. Okay, um, promoter can help you by starting this bout card for you. After all, they're the ones that set up the fights. They want the order of the fights. They know the ages. Uh, they know most of this information for you. You will be a quality control checker to make sure the bouts are within the legal parameters and age and weight um, and also record it. So right here, we're going to put the basic information on the event. Uh, since this may be sent to the officials, you can put the check-in time and the start time so there's no controversy. As a lead official, your name goes here. Um, you put all the inspectors, you got plenty of columns. Now when you get to the referees and judges, it's important that you put their name on the line in each column. Sometimes you have referees that also judge. They have to be listed in the judges column as well because we use a drop-down feature. Otherwise, it will not work. The doctor, you'll put the name. If it's in a jurisdiction that allows a non-physician medical attendant, you'll put either RN or a doctor, a chiropractor, or, or whatever it is, but we need their name. Same thing with the first responder. If it's in a jurisdiction that does not require advanced life support, you can put uh, evacuation plan 911. Uh, following the event, you're going to list any injuries that result in a medical suspension here, just so we make sure it confers with the reports, the other reports that you sent, and then I will delete this once it's published. Okay, um, here's your lineup. If you need to change it, you can cut and paste these boxes. This is an Excel form. You don't need to be an expert to Excel, but it's good to practice it. Now rounds. If you're going to deviate from the norm, which is three rounds, you probably want to highlight this just so you have a recollection once the bout comes, this will trigger you to make sure the referee understands and the announcer that this is two rounds. Okay, by highlighting it helps. As you can see, Melissa entered the proper names of these athletes. The names should match up with their license. Uh, nicknames does not help us when we're recording results and records. We want their actual names. She also put the name of the team. This will help when we add up the team points. You want to have the proper team and the team listed, otherwise it would not go to team points. Uh, she also put that age to the month. She used agecalculator.com. You do not really have to do this unless it's a two-year age spread. The reason we want this for a two-year age spread is because if it goes over the maximum parameters of two years, you want to make sure that the months list up. You can't just tell by saying eight and ten if they're over two years. If for some reason you need to put a waiver, you can write waiver approved uh, and so on in this comments box. Okay, now the weight, the promoter is going to dictate what the maximum weight agreed upon would be. So we're going to put in the weight box here 60 pounds. Now when you do your weigh-in, it's important to use this as your control form because you'll enter the weight right in here. See, this one weighed in at 57. This one weighed in at 62. 
This should trigger a response because 62 is higher than 60, meaning blue is going to get some penalties. I'm just reenacting this. This did not actually happen, but you're going to put first in the comments penalty box, you're going to put blue two pounds over, which means blue is going to get penalties. So as you know, it's two points per pound. He's over by two pounds, so you're going to put a number four in the box for blue. Immediately, the judges' scores will populate four to nothing before the bout starts. So the first one listed is red, which is four. Second listed is blue, zero. The same thing can be done if they were, say, if blue was late. Late to check-in. That's going to be two-point penalty. It populates. This has no effect for the judges. They don't see this. They don't need to know this. This is just for the master control form. Okay, so the bout is going to start. Uh, once the bout is concluded, or before the bout starts, you're going to put the referee's name. Again, you have a simple drop-down box to use here. Um, if you want to line it up pretty, you can just use these boxes here. Um, judges, again, populate them. If you don't have them listed here, they're not going to be available for you to populate. And this is in Excel, so it has to be done a certain way. You can do this all in advance. If you have to make any changes, you can make a real quick change. Now you're going to get the bout cards. You're going to put in the results right here. I'm just going to make up results. Notice it populated right here for this first judge. They just have the penalty points. Now I'm going to just do the other judges. And boom, you have the results right here. Again, the one listed first is red, listed second is blue. So you see right here we have a split decision. So you're going to go to the method, you have all the options, and you're going to click split decision. And then the winner here is going to be the first one listed. So you can either put an X there or you can put a W. It doesn't matter. Now, we're going to go to our next bout. Say this weight is 75. They both weighed in within the parameters. So there's no penalties. So let's say there's a submission. Okay, you're going to put win by submission, say it was the second round, and the time, 15 seconds. But you're also going to put the results, because again, this is good for quality control purposes, for training of the judges, if there's any challenges or appeals, we want to know what the score was, even if the, the, the bout was stopped. So you're still going to populate this. to include the round where the submission occurred, just so we have a good record of everything. So this is only relevant, but you want to list the winner here of the bout. Again, it can be done with an X or a W. And again, this gets filed with us. So once you're done with this form, go over for quality control purposes, email this back to me, I will cut out everything from here on down to publish on the website, but I will send the entire form to include the judges' scores to all the judges and the referee so they can review their work and to see if there's anything we need to work on. So, again, it might be a little intimidating if you're not used to um, Excel or, or documents, but this was made as easy as possible, and it, it and it, and it cuts out all the possibilities for errors or forgetting something because we all know once an event starts, there's a lot of stuff going on. And then to try to remember things is really difficult. So aside from this, once the event is done, we need the post-bout injury reports. We need these sent as one PDF. So if you have 10 bouts, we need 10 of these forms sent as one PDF, not 10 separate forms. They get forwarded to the medical researchers. If there was no injury, there should be indicated no injury on the form, but we need 
something to show for every single bout that we've ever had. Uh, if there are any suspensions, you'll also send a suspension form. Uh, if there are any waivers, we'll need those as well. And these are other things that will help you out. So um, if you do the on-site licensing packet, we need it back in this format. We need this signed. We need this waiver signed and initialed. We need their physical. And we also need a proof of age document. These documents are provided to the licensee for educational purposes. So there you have it. Um, practice with the form. It makes everything easier once you're a little comfortable with it. Any questions, let me know.